Howdy folks. Near Alderpold. For uh, about the umpteenth time this week. I've been watching way too much YouTube of late, but I've been uh, trying to catch up with a lot of the YTPC, a lot of channels that I uh, either haven't subscribed to before or ones which um, ones which I was subscribed to but for some reason don't don't appear on my feed a lot of the time. Algorithms and all that stuff. Oh, get the housekeeping out of the way. Smoking in my Blakemar Aristocrat uh, Canadian. That featured in my last video, I think, uh, as the best smoker. Some Marlin Flake, which I have to thank Ariège Piper for reminding me a little while ago, because I know that he's mad on the stuff. Uh, and I bought a 100 gram tin while I was in Germany a couple of years ago. Um, so it reminded me, oh, that's probably really tasty by now. And I jarred it up. And it is sublime. One of those blends that I forget about quite a lot, but then when I remember I think, oh yeah, there's a reason I like that. way too much YouTube um, which yeah, it's been good in a way um, discovering channels that I hadn't come across before uh, some good folks out there but I have to say there's a few bloody idiots as well I'm sure that uh, sure that people would say the same of me The things that, uh, that I came across was another one of these. Another one of these VRs. Um, can't remember who it's to. Don't know the beginning of the chain. It's not even a case of not remembering. It's a case of having never known. Um, but it's uh, what your biggest fear is, or what are you afraid of? And I thought that was a really interesting question because fear is something that people don't really like to talk about. Um, obviously, everybody's afraid of something. Um, but, uh, but people don't like to, like to be reminded of it. And they don't like to talk about it because, uh, well, there's that element of pride, I suppose, and not wanting to appear weak. I recorded this video <laughs> a couple of times already. I ended up going off into a rant uh, about right wingers and why they're afraid of everything from Black Lives Matter to LGBTQ communities to women's rights to the environment. <laughs> well, that was partially in response to a couple of bullshit videos I've seen in the community recently. But I figured uh, my responding directly on here is probably not really going to be too helpful. And uh, But anyway, it, 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 it's, it comes from this idea that uh, fear, phobias, product of misunderstanding or of not understanding something um, 
And conversely, the more that you understand the subject of a fear or a phobia, the more the fear diminishes and the greater respect is developed for that thing that was once feared. So to put that in context, now I've talked about in the past, uh, I did a video on uh, tarantulas, why I got into keeping tarantula spiders, and that was because of a phobia. Um, and the best way to, uh, to deal with that phobia, I thought, was to keep tarantulas. And uh, indeed, the, the more I kept them, the more I studied them, the more fascinating they became, and the more the fear diminishes. Now that, that logic can be applied right throughout society, right throughout life. And the reason I mentioned right-wingers is because uh, of all the political ideologies, they are the ones who are most afraid. They're most afraid of change, they're most afraid of, uh, of all of those, those things that uh, conservatism, especially religious conservatism, conservatism, is afraid of giving over power to uh, people of colour or women, LGBT, people who don't fit into the, so, the narrow social uh, vision that they have for the world. Wow, this road I'm on seems to have an awful lot of trainee truck drivers. Come on man, you can get a double-decker bus through there. But anyway, so yeah, my last video, I went off into a bit of a rant about that. So I, I thought, well, screw that, I deleted it. Thought I'd do it again. Just tell you about a fear I have. Um, now I've always tried to deal with my phobias the way that I deal with my fear of spiders, which is to understand, understand the nature of that fear, the subject of it, uh, and through understanding, overcome it. And I've done that a lot in my life, whether it was with spiders or uh, with heights, for example, I had a fear of heights, so I took up rock climbing. Um, it's progress, you know. But a fear I've had since I was a little boy, and it came uh, as a result of an illness. I had uh, I had salmonella. Um, got it on the uh, marriage of Prince Charles and Lady Diana in 1982, I think it was. Anyway, uh, the salmonella almost killed me. Um, I was certainly bedridden um, for a lot of time and having a lot of hallucinations, a lot of very vivid and terrifying hallucinations. One of which was that the earth uh, would open up and swallow me. Uh, a sinkhole opening up, effectively. So since then, it's kind of been one of those things that occasionally... Now, I don't have bad dreams at all, actually. I'm a very, very positive dreamer. But if I do have a bad dream or something like that, on the rare occasions that I have, it's, it's usually something like that. But I just wanted to relate a story that happened uh, while I was in Papua New Guinea uh, a few years back. Um, interestingly enough, I did a video and uploaded it to YouTube on the day that this, this thing happened. And that was, if you go back uh, through my videos, if you are so desperately bored that you feel the need to do so, um, I did a video, I think I was reviewing a, a, a pocket hammock. I was out in the jungle. We were, um, we'd gone to look for a, a cave with some local people who were guiding us, uh, which is uh, sacred to them. Um, but also it's where they go to hunt bats, uh, the big fruit-eating bats, uh, which, uh, which they eat, amongst other things. Um, and I was ill that day with something. Now, at the time I thought it was malaria, but as it transpired, it was uh, probably the bacterial pneumonia that, uh, that led uh, to the chronic fatigue syndrome that I suffer from now quite badly. Um, 
So I didn't go all the way down this extremely steep ravine, steep and slippy jungle ravine to get to the cave because I didn't want my didn't want my guys to to have to carry me back up again. So I stopped halfway up, um, put my hammock up, waited. Now the area is well known for uh, for sinkholes because it's built on it's on limestone. Um, uh, the, the jungle is all, all on limestone, very old limestone. A lot of sinkholes, a lot of famous sinkholes over there, locally famous at least, including one which is apparently big enough to land a jumbo jet in. Um, but in any case, so I'm sitting there in my hammock, and because I'm already halfway up the hill, when the guys come back, a couple of the guys who are out front, a couple of the lead, lead guides, if you like, local fellas, um, they catch up to me and we head out the jungle, three of us. So I'm ahead of the rest of my party. We got out to the road first, and we stood there having a smoke or whatever, talking. Um, these guys taking the mickey out of me because of my bad top pissing. <laughs> when all of a sudden there's this crack, and crash, woof kind of sound. And I look around and what the hell is that? And one of the guys says, oh, it's just a tree falling over. Um, and I went, nah, that sounds bigger than a tree. And as I look around, from the, from the point where we're standing, you can see over the top of a lot of the forest canopy. And I watched this area of forest, of rainforest, probably a couple of hundred square meters in size, just go and disappear, disappear from view, right where we had been walking. So there was a sinkhole that had opened up. <laughs> so my first, uh, my first thought was, crap, my friends are still in there, you know, um, still in the forest, I'm waiting for them to catch up. So I, I hightail it into the forest uh, to go look for them, half expecting them to have, you know, been swallowed up. When uh, I hear these voices coming up the trail, and it's these guys, and they look at me and they said, "Hey, Leo, what was that? Uh, what was that noise? Did you hear that?" And I went, "Yeah, you would not believe how damned lucky you guys were, because it missed you by mere minutes." didn't go uh, back into the forest to survey the damage. I figured it was a bit dangerous. But that was, uh, yeah, that was a lucky day for us and would have been the sum of my fears. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, you guys take care, and I will catch you again on the next one. See ya.